In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the back cover on the iPhone 15 Plus. Begin by powering down the device. Then take a pentalobe screwdriver to remove the two screws at the bottom of the phone, either side of the lightning connector. These don't always come out with the screwdriver, so you might have to use your tweezers to help you with it. And then store them safely for later. We can now take this over to our heat mat, where we're going to use the heat to soften the edges that hold down this back cover. My heat mat's set to 85 degrees C, and I'm going to put it on there for the next 10-15 minutes to fully let that adhesive soften. You can use a heat gun or hairdryer to achieve the same effect. However, the heat mat will distribute heat more evenly and you can get on with other stuff whilst that's heating up. But once it's had 10, 15 minutes on there, let's get this over to the workbench and remove this back cover. Now we're gonna open up the back cover, the similar way to removing screens from iPhones if you've ever done it before. And I'm gonna use a Dorco blade to create a gap, which we're then gonna use. We're gonna pry it sort of open it's a bit awkward this, I will admit, because it's got like a frame on there as well. But once you've got under it, you can pry it upwards to create a larger gap, big enough to fit the guitar pick in there, which we're going to use. We're going to sort of pry upwards, move it along, pry up a bit more, move it along. I mean, it's, it's not a pretty job, but once you've got a decent grab on it, you'll find that it comes up all as one. If you find that the foam cools down too much and the adhesive is no longer soft, then you can go ahead and either heat it up a bit more on the heat mat or with the hair, hair, hair dryer, or you can add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol along those edges to help soften the adhesive a little bit more. Just be careful where the glass lands on your workbench because obviously the screen is facing down and we don't want to scratch the hell out of it. And I'm just going to use some tweezers as well to help me get underneath this adhesive because it's very strong stuff. As you can see, we're just working our way around using the plastic pick to separate the glass from the edges, but it has left behind quite a lot on the actual edge of the edge of the phone. So we're gonna we'll get that off in a minute though. Once you've worked your way all the way around, you're gonna find that the phone opens up just like opening a book from the back cover. Just be careful because there is a flex cable just there that we don't want to damage because we do need to transfer that over to our new part. First and foremost, we need to disconnect power from the device. So remove this tri-wing screw here and here, which holds down a shield, which we can remove using our tweezers. And then we can use the praying stick to disconnect the battery, isolating power from the device. We can now take our Y triple zero screwdriver again, and we're going to remove this screw just here, which holds down another shield, which we can pry up with the tweezers, and then we can use the plastic stick again to disconnect this flex cable here, allowing the back cover to be removed from the chassis of the phone. Like I said before, there is a lot of leftover glass on the edges of the chassis because this stuff sticks really, really hard. So I'm going to use this little exacto blade to just run along the edge, a bit like cleaning up iPad screens, to remove both the adhesive and the glass what was left behind. Obviously we need to be really careful when we're doing this because there is flex cables, batteries and other components that could get damaged by this sharp blade. So just be really careful when you're working your way around. Continue working your way around, making sure that all the edges are really nice and clean. I'm just going to use a little handheld dust blower to remove any remaining bits of glass. It also helps if you shake it upside down a little bit, make sure that any glass what's got in there has popped out. Now we're going to install the new dust and moisture resistant seal. Line it up along one edge and then allow it to settle down Then peel off the top film. I managed to get hold of an aftermarket part for this repair, which brought the repair cost down. It was from a company called Digi4U here in the UK. I'm not sure if they've got a website. If they do, I will link it below. If they've not, then there will be no link. As you can see, it comes with the magnets attached to the back cover there, but we will need to remove this plastic film off that. And then you'll also notice that there is a flex cable for the wireless charging coil there, as well as a flash and microphone that needs to be transferred 
onto this one. Now we're gonna use a heat gun to remove this flex cable. I've got my heat gun set to 200 degrees centigrade and a full wind speed. And what you're gonna find is it will soften the adhesive without causing any damage to any of these cables, but it will take a minute just to warm it up. You can also add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol around the edges and that'll sort of soak in as well before it evaporates and just soften up the adhesive a little bit more. There was someone moaning on a video that we shouldn't use isopropyl alcohol, but I'm going to have to disagree with them on this occasion. Once it's warmed up, I'm going to take the plastic guitar pick now and just sort of slide it underneath. If you find that it's a bit tough, add some alcohol onto the pick itself and that's going to sort of spread underneath. Take your tri-wing screwdriver again now and we're gonna remove this little screw here. Use your tweezers to remove the shield. This is for the flash, and you can just sort of push it from the other side using the plastic spudger to poke it through. It's a bit trickier with this uh, with this shield here because it, it's sort of clipped in. So you need to pick it off, and then it's sort of hinged like that. But that one can be lifted off, and I'm just using the edge of the tweezers to help me remove these flex cables like that there is like a metal bracket what holds the microphone mesh on it's always awkward to remove this so just be careful and use a blade to get between the gap be sorry between the glass and the metal bracket you might need some more heat to help it along and i'm just using the heat gun to soften the adhesive and the blade to get underneath it and that's just pried up now so we've got all this out and now just the last bit is this wireless charging coil and it's got like this black sort of adhesive on the edges of that. Get underneath that like we have done with the rest of the adhesives to separate it. And what we're aiming to do here is make sure that we're in between the glass and the copper coil of the wireless charging coil. And then we can work our way around just sort of prying it upwards and separating it from the glass. Just remember this glass is already damaged so it doesn't really matter if you break that anymore but we don't want to be damaging the wireless coil and now we can just peel that last bit off try not to break any of it you can see we've got a bit of the wireless coil that's separated from the edge so just make sure that that goes back where it belongs so now that we've got this and we can lay it on top first of all just here making sure that everything lines up nicely making sure that we line up the flash and the rest of the flex cable in the right place and then we can reattach this shield here clipping it into place like that this shield here and then that one gets screwed into place with one y triple zero tri-wing screw and then just make sure that this wireless charging coil lines up nicely on the back and that I didn't notice this before but there needs to be no magnets left on it because there is new magnets attached to our new back glass so make sure that there's none of those left behind with that stuck down there's a couple of plastic films inside these camera lenses which I don't like because there's nothing to grab onto them so just be careful when you if you if you have one like this and it's difficult to remove when I say difficult to remove, I mean the hardest part of the job. And now we can get our prepared chassis and we're gonna line up this flex cable, first of all, and apply pressure once we've got the connector lined up. We can use our tweezers to help us line up this shield just here. It's got a funny little slot that, and a clip that connects it. And then of course the single tri-wing screw that holds it down. Make sure that that sits flush and then we can move down and reattach the battery connector. And the same with that shield, that's got a little clip on it as well. And then the two tri-wing screws that hold that one down before finally peeling off the last layer of the dust and moisture resistant adhesive. And then we can finally close this thing up and make sure that it sits in in the top first. And then the rest of it should just squeeze into place on this back. And then finally, those two pentalobe screws 
at the bottom of the device. Whilst I'm screwing them in, I'm also pressing the power button so we can turn this thing back on. And once it is back on, we of course need to test the wireless charging functionality, the cameras, buttons, as well as the flash and rear microphone. That just about completes this repair. Thank you for watching and see you next time.